All right, so in this explainer video for the reimbursements, I'm going to pretty move backwards because it just makes everything so much easier to understand. So rather than starting at the dashboard, I'm going to start with say the raw shipment. So a SKU data sheet is pretty explanatory where I've got all my SKUs and my ASINs listed and it's looking up the length, of width and height and um, weight. Now on this particular product, since it's a demo data and it's pretty much a dummy product, I don't have the, uh, the dimensions entered into the system. But if it was, you'll see the numbers. And then based on that, you can identify whether the FBA fee is correct or not. Now, if you know that the fee should be like, say, 266, but this one is currently showing up as 424, then obviously you can go back and request a reimbursement for all of the orders that you were charged over the normal fee. So that's a, this is a way to look at um, based on whether you're being overcharged on the fees. Let's go to the shipments, the raw shipments. This tab is going to pretty much go through the inventory shipments where you've sent in from your location to Amazon. Okay, so from your warehouse to Amazon dock and they are receiving. That's where, that's this part of the supply chain. So in this example, you'll see that there was one unit missing in this particular shipment at this FC and there was another 60 that was missing from here here another 58 that was missing from here and here so you can a short um, way is anything wet red you can go ahead and pretty much create a ticket submit a ticket saying that hey amazon you're missing one unit from here we want to be reimbursed 60 from here we want to be reimbursed 58 from here we want to be reimbursed another thing another second step that you can do to make sure that you're submitting valid tickets is Let's say that Amazon initially said they lost 60 units or they counted 60 less than what you had sent in. That's highly going to be unlikely because unless you have very incompetent warehouse team, it's most likely Amazon that lost the, um, the units. So what you can do is I'm going to get this FBA shipment and then I'm going to enter it here. It's going to reload everything and then pull in all the transactions of this shipment ID and right now I have two so on March 20th it's showing that 120 was um, checked in and then on this day 300 uh, March 24 minus 60 60 units went missing so since these two numbers don't match up you know there's something to do with where did the 60 units go so what you can do is verify with your warehouse team whether they actually sent 120 or whether it was supposed to be 60 and whether amazon miscounted by 60 or they reduced the number by 60. okay so that's another step two to verifying whether it's something it's a ticket that you want to submit or not so the section from the shipments from your warehouse to amazon's dock that's pretty simple the next one is customer returns. Okay, so this is from when um, Amazon ships it to the customer and the customer ships it back to Amazon, obviously. Now, a few tips is check to see whether something was reimbursed or not. In the template, we've added a column O and it's going to, it's going to look up. Okay, if I get, can get this loaded. Okay. I'm going to be searching the order ID against all of the order IDs in the reimbursements report, uh, say here, so that I know, and I'll get to this, but this is a reimbursements report where it shows all of your reimbursements received from Amazon. Okay, and if I go back to the returns, and if I see that this particular this particular order ID has not been reimbursed, then I know that these are the ones that I could potentially get reimbursed for. The one where it will show that you've been reimbursed. So for example here, this one will show you that, okay, this has already been reimbursed, so there's no reason to do any, take any action. But um, say, for example, something like a wrong item was ordered and then the customer damaged it and the unit was returned back into inventory. You can decide based on your history of your account and then based on the um, type of products that you sell, whether this is going to be valid and you'll be able to get a return or not. Another trick to that is what you want to do is go to return status, change it to reimbursed. And first, this is going to show you all of your reasons and the dispositions that was reimbursed. 
Okay, so I'm just going to give this a few seconds to load. Okay, once that's loaded, this because this is a fairly smaller account, so this is what I have, um, but I've only got four line items, and it's showing that these four were reimbursed. Anytime that was a carrier damaged, it was reimbursed, and even though this disposition was sellable, I got reimbursed because one was undeliverable carrier and one was defective. So that means a lot of the times Seller Central will tell you that, okay, because it was defective and it's in a sellable disposition, they will say, no, we're not going to reimburse you. But then you can go back and give them this example and say, hey, then why did you reimburse us for this? Because it was in the exact same reason and the exact same disposition, but it was reimbursed. And then you provide a number as well as the order number and that way you can go back and push back and fight Amazon into getting more reimbursements because obviously they are not incentivized to give you money back. Amazon will do what's in their best interest and if they can just get away with it they're not going to refund you money back unless you can prove your point and um, that's where you use this reimburse status to find what other types of reimbursements you received in the same reason same disposition and then submit a ticket to amazon so knowing this i would then change it back to say or okay and then when it's gone to all remember that it was um, defective and sellable and it was reimbursed so i could find everything that was say defective and even if for example this says defective and this was re unit returned to inventory i could create a ticket saying hey this is defective defective why is this not reimbursed and then again provide that other um, example of the one that was already reimbursed so this is where there's some subjectivity involved and you're the one that knows your account you're the one that knows your product the best so you can figure out which one to submit a ticket for what you don't want to do is go through a copy a paste like say every single thing here and then upload it onto amazon because they will get back to you and say you've created work for our seller support um, you're abusing our system and if you do it again we're going to give you a strike on your account and they do um, tend to do that and it's also what happens to a lot of agencies who don't really think through the particulars of the account and anyone that just bulks upload they're going to get that same response from amazon so this is where some subjectivity is required some training in a team is required and the best person is going to be internal we provide the data and we can't give you a hard and fast rule of step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. We can provide a guideline and a framework like this video and that's really the best that we can do. And anybody who says otherwise, honestly, is taking, um, taking you for a ride. Next one, the raw inventory replace. What this one is, is when Amazon, when you see in column I, a yes, it means Amazon has either given a refund and a replacement. So two times they've pretty much given a refund or a replacement. So you're out of pocket two times, right? Whereas the customer is great, I get it. Now, I don't know what the reason for I do that. Maybe it's out of goodwill or maybe the customer refunded it, but they didn't return the product. And then Amazon either just sent a replacement or something. There's so many different scenarios, but that's just something to be careful of. But using this section, anytime that you see yes, it will highlight in red and those ones create a ticket and say um, this item was already refunded or replaced, but it was double replaced or double refunded. Um, so depending on what that is, you just want to create a ticket for those. Now we get to the inventory adjustments. So you know how when I was talking about the raw shipments, it was from Am your warehouse to Amazon and then adjustments now is from say within the Amazon ecosystem of fulfillment centers. So FC to FCB, FCC, FCD, etc. There's so many things that are going to be um, lost, damaged inside the Amazon network. That's where you, this will show up. All of these codes like E, M, D, etc. These are the ones that we've identified as the ones that you are very highly likely to get a reimbursement for. And to know what these reasons are, you can go into inputs tab. And then for example, like here, code E means it was damaged at an Amazon FC. So Amazon is at fault, right? So you should be able to get a reimbursement. 
Again, Amazon is not going to always allow you to. So that's where some pushback is going to be required. And another thing is, although they say, okay, two has gone missing and two has gone, or two units was damaged by Amazon at a fulfillment center. Okay. Later on, they may come back and say, no, we found these two units somewhere. And then they um, pretty much strike it out. So that's just something to be careful of and be aware of. Okay, so the ones where obviously there's some big discrepancies, anything like minus ones, you know, those are the ones that you just want to check. Okay, um, but if there's something like minus 10 or minus 15, etc., and then there's a lot of items being destroyed, lost, damaged in fulfillment, etc., those are the things, those are the ones that you do want to identify and request a reimbursement for. So this is one is fairly straightforward where, you know, you don't want to do it for every single code. For example, F means, F means inventory found, right? So that means they found your inventory somewhere and then they put it back into your inventory pool. That's why you've got the plus one, same, and another plus one from here, etc. So that's where, you know, you want to sometimes check and filter by the FN SKU. So if you have like right now on this particular FN SKU, okay. Here we go. Uh, one found, one found, two found in two different FCs and they've been added to your inventory. Uh, and then you just want to make sure that it reconciles and it balances out. And then we get to the raw reimbursements, which is to show you all the activity of everything that is reimbursed. So anytime something is reimbursed from say your inventory, your replacements, your returns, your shipments, you get logged into the reimbursements. Funnily enough, Amazon does not make it easy for you to check uh, a particular, say, line item from here and um, determine whether it was from, say, like an inventory adjustment or a return or a ship. Okay, they tell you to go in and look up based on the FN SKU and then the date and to verify based on that. But, you know, that's close to extremely difficult because there could be so many things related to an F, um, FN SKU. And but there's so happening in a way. So there's, it makes it very difficult to reconcile and balance out. So that's where, you know, we use this as a log to verify whether something has been reimbursed or not. In column R, you know, everything should show up as true because again, these are all the transactions where something was reimbursed. In column M, you will see whether something was reimbursed in cash and column N shows you whether an inventory was found and then put back into your um, inventory pool. Look at row M8. So this one was a reimbursement reversal where originally you were reimbursed for $5.07. And then they reversed it. They took it back out because they found an inventory related to that. And there's going to be some where you get reimbursed. So for example, like there was a customer returned one, right? So I don't know where this one is from. So let's see if I can find it. Hopefully this demo data will have some balancing stuff. Okay, no, I don't have that um, inventory adjustments. No, there's no. Okay, no. Um, okay, no, I don't have that one on this particular account. But what you do is use this to. I use it as a VLOOKUP table now. If you're not used to VLOOKUPs, I. Just, that's what this form, um, this column does. It checks each of these order IDs, compares and see whether it matches up with anything in the Amazon order ID in column G of reimbursements return. If it's a yes, then I know that, okay, it was it matches up and reconciled. If it's not, then um, that's another one where you could go in and create a ticket for. Okay, so that's why let's go through it because Again, this is going to show you the FBA fees. This is from your warehouse to Amazon. This is from customer to customer, customer to returns or Amazon. Amazon to customers is going to be the same thing, uh, Amazon to customers. This inventory adjustments is from FC to FCs. And the reimbursement is going to be a total overview log of everything that's happening in the whole system. So it accounts for the Fs from FC within the FCs to the customers to Amazon and your warehouse. Okay, and that board is pretty explanatory where it will show you all the items that were submitted uh, 
give you the financial numbers on your account when you plug your account in you'll see the um the finances and stuff like that you'll see like the number of reimbursement categorized the different types of reasons etc and it'll give you a high level overview of you know what's happening where things are misplaced the most where things are really having trouble and getting lost and adjustments are coming back so this will help you get a much better higher overview so i hope that makes sense and uh if you have any other questions please let us know